Hi, I'm an instructional designer. I've got a great job. I get to change communities by helping to design strategies to initiate and sustain growth in the direction that they want to grow. But man, now that I talk about it, there's a lot of pressure there. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. If only there was some sort of steps I could follow to make it happen. Wait a minute. I know. I studied this in grad school. Robert Gagne's got the conditions of learning theory. He's got nine steps I can follow. Oh yeah, I'm gonna rock this. Let's, Let's, Let's go, go Gagne. Gagne! Robert Gagne's conditions of learning and the nine steps of instruction. Lou Harrett. Steve Popovich. Kate Sassatelli. Toby Sanford. In this presentation, you will learn who was Dr. Robert Mills Gagne, Gagne's conditions of learning theory, and how this theory applies to the real world. Robert Gagne was born August 21, 1916, and he died April 28, 2002. He was an American educational psychologist who studied at Yale for his undergrad and then went to Brown University for his Ph.D. He worked with the Army Air Corps training pilots during World War II, which is where he developed studies to explain good instruction. In Gagne's book, The Conditions of Learning, which was most recently published in 1985, Gagne theorized that there are five categories of learning. The first category is intellectual skills. This would be skills such as distinguishing different musical pitches or calculating the earned run average of a baseball team. The second category is cognitive strategies. This is where people use their thinking to create a plan or to do, create a change in something, such as devising a corporate plan to improve customer relations. The third category is verbal information. This is where people can recall information they've been taught in the past, such as listing the seven major symptoms of cancer. The fourth category is motor skills. This is where people use their muscles. In, an example would be doing a somersault dive off of a diving board. And the fifth category is attitudes, where people apply their learning to their outlook on something, such as um, deciding to exercise daily to better their health. According to Gagne, good instruction requires planning, and there are nine steps of planning instruction. The first step is where the instructor determines what they want the students to learn. The second step is where the instructor decides what they need to know beforehand in order to be successful. The third step is where the instructor decides what he or she needs to actually teach the students. The fourth step is specifying the learning context, well, telling the students why they need to learn it and where they'll use it in their life. The fifth step is where you take a look at all of your learners in the classroom and you see what kind of different types of learners there are because different types of learners need different types of instruction. The sixth step is selecting the media, such as what are you going to use to teach the class or to teach the information, books, videos, etc. The seventh step is getting the students excited, making them motivated to actually learn the content. The eighth step is to do a trial run, test the instruction with a small group of students before putting it out for the entire group. And the ninth step is uh, using a summative evaluation where you try to determine if the instruction actually worked. After planning the instruction, there are also nine steps to delivering the instruction. With Gagne's nine steps for delivery instruction, um, we're going to look at an actual uh, real world situation uh, and walk through the different steps that uh, that occur with the delivery instruction. So, so basically the situation that we're going to look at is uh, if we have a group of teachers that need to learn how to use a student management software system that's going to be introduced by the district uh, tech department, um, we want to figure out a design plan using Gagne's model on how to do that. Um, and the model is going to lead us to the learning goal of, uh, of eventually getting all the teachers comfortable to use the software uh, through just a couple workshops. And so the very first step of Gagne's delivery method uh, is to have something where you can gain their attention. So in this case, we can present a case study um, or just tell them, you know, the perks of using the software. Uh, for example, you know, it'll save them time with grading or 80% uh, of school systems are, are converting over to the software or something like that. 
So once you have their uh, attention, then you want to tell them what the actual objectives are uh, for these workshops and it's kind of set a precedence for what they should expect for the workshops. And so, uh, you know, for the goal of this one is going to be <clears throat> for them to be completely comfortable with using the system in class on their own uh, once they're once they're done with uh, with these workshops that we have with them. Um, so the third step now is going to be to stimulate some kind of prior learning that that they've had in the past. And so in this case, it might be that you know you had a training session for uh, for teaching them how to use the website, the district site, or or something similar to that. And so from that step, after you make them recall, <clears throat> then the fourth step is actually present the material. So what is the difference? with what you're teaching them now versus what they learned in the past. And so maybe in this case, it's just an extension of the website and incorporates grading or attendance or administrative correspondence or something similar like that. And so from that aspect, and the fifth part of it is to provide the guidance for their learning. Um, and so with that, it can be, a, you know, you can give them PowerPoint with instructions uh, on how to navigate just step by step. And then the sixth step will, or that'll lead into the sixth step, um, and that's to elicit their performance. And so you can have them break out into groups, and as a group, they can use that guide to walk through the software. And then while they're doing that, you'll be actually on the seventh step yourself as an instructor, and that's providing feedback. So you can walk around, answer any questions that they might have as a group, help them if they're stuck. Uh, and also kind of give them like a little quiz um, just to make sure that they do fully understand um, what they are learning and retaining that. And so, so that leads into the eighth step then of this delivery, and that's assess the performance. So, um, so with that, this is some kind of formative assessment where you give them a test, or in this case that we have, you can have them uh, sit down with you and actually walk you through the steps of using the software themselves. And that leads us to the very last step, which is to enhance the retention and transfer it, for it and make sure they, they can take those skills and use them in the field um, and then you can actually follow up with that by having weekly um, sessions with them or just sitting in on their class while they're actually using the software and then make sure that they have those skills and retain them. Gagne's plan does have some disadvantages. It was clearly designed for a military purpose, so it does discourage free thinking. It may not be so useful for some subjects that require more abstract thought. Uh, such as philosophy or other subjects. One of the advantages of Gagne's method is that it takes learner attitude into account. And personally, I was surprised to hear that he cared about learner attitude considering the, the military background. But Gagne considers the learner's attitude and tries to motivate the learner to actually want to learn the subject. He associates the new topics with previous knowledge and builds the student's confidence level um, to try to be trained on these new methods. He allows for trial and error um, so that the students are allowed to make small mistakes and build on their past experiences. Um, and at the end of the training, students should be able to perform the new tasks independently. It's a great communication strategy as the students actually want to learn throughout the process. That's it. Time to go design some instruction, and I'm going to do it Gagne, Gagne style. style. Teaching Gagne style. Gagne style.